praise the Lord, everybody. Let's clap our hands and let's give God, amen, a praise wherever we are. We are honored to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We honor God and we thank him for this day that he has allowed us to see. It is because of his grace and his mercy that we are alive. I hear the word of God say uh, that it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion felt not that is renewed Hallelujah, every morning, and great is the faithfulness of our God. We honor God, we glorify him uh, for what he is doing in our life, and we are thankful uh, to have uh, the Lord in our life. I uh, want to uh, take this moment for all of those that are watching us on this morning, just take a moment on this afternoon, just take a moment to share this broadcast, let people know, let your friends, let your family, let all everybody around you know that Beulah Tabernacle is on the air and that there is a blessing coming your way. I believe God, that God is getting ready to bless and strengthen us through uh, his word and strengthen us through this worship experience. Uh, before we go forward in our worship experience, I do want to take a moment just to pray and ask God's blessings upon us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you, we give you honor, we give you praise. We thank you for this opportunity that you are allowing us to come together and to worship and to praise you. And Father, even right now, I pray, Lord, that you will receive our worship, that you will receive our praise, that you will bless and strengthen us today through your word. Even bless your man servant that shall come forth to deliver the word of God. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that everyone that is coming on this broadcast, that they will be blessed through your word and that you would transform us through the, through the power of your word. Bless us and strengthen us today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We honor God and we thank him. Uh, just a word uh, in the word of God, just a little scripture here. The book of Psalm 27. Psalm 27, it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came up up came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. We thank God for his word. How many grateful for the word of God? I say, how many grateful for the word of God? The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. I'm so grateful for the word of God. God. We bring you greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank God uh, for the pastor of this church. Let's give God praise for the Bishop Horace Michael. We honor God for uh, him and to the First Lady of this great church. We thank God for First Lady Tania Michael. We thank God for them and to uh, what God is doing in their lives. And I'm so grateful to come to you again on this afternoon to give unto you this worship experience. I believe that God is getting ready to bless us in a tremendous way. And if your heart and if your mind is open to receive what it is that God has to say, there is a blessing coming just for you. I believe God has something telling me just for you on this afternoon. Uh, we're going forward in our worship experience and I was not told uh, who was going to be doing the singing today. Uh, and so I believe uh, I don't know who's coming right now. We're going to go into our hymn. Our sister Michelle is coming. Give God praise. Sister Michelle is going to come. She's going to give us our hymn in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What do you want the Lord to say? Oh, oh, oh. What do you want the Lord to say? He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant, into, into the joy of the Lord. Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? Oh, what do you want the Lord to say? He'll say, well done. My good and 
willing, faithful servant into into the joy of the Lord. Oh, that's what I want the Lord to say. Oh, that's what I want the Lord to say. He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant, into, into the joy of the Lord. Oh, that's what I want the Lord to say. Oh, that's what I want the Lord to say. He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant, into, into the joy of the Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise him in the morning, praise him in the new time, praise God, praise God, praise him when the sun goes down, you are the praise God, praise God, praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noon time. Praise God. Praise God. Praise him when the sun goes down. Oh, that's what I want the Lord to say. Oh, that's what I want the Lord to say. He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant, into, into the joy of the Lord. Oh, that's what I want the Lord to say. Oh, that's what I want the Lord to say. He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Into, into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's enter into the joy of the Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. We have a reason and we have a right to give God praise. We're so grateful at this time. We're going to go and we're going to have our welcome coming from the first lady of this church. Let's praise God for first lady Tania Michael as she comes in Jesus name. Praise the Lord, beautiful people of God on this afternoon. We are just so grateful that the Lord is in our lives on this morning. We're so grateful that he allowed us to wake up on this morning, give us breath in our bodies, give us a praise on our lips. Hallelujah. Are you glad about that on this morning? We truly want to welcome you to the house of the Lord, where the word of the Lord is going to come forth on today. Hallelujah. Where you will be enriched, enlightened, inspired, and encouraged. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Horace C. Michael, the Beulah Tabernacle Church family, we are so glad that you are here on today. And there is something that the Lord wants to say on this morning. The song that Sister Michelle came forth and sang is, what do you want the Lord to say? And that is a question that can be applied in many directions and in many areas of our lives. What is it that you want the Lord to say this morning? Do you want him to give you life on this morning? Do you want him to give you encouragement on this morning? Do you want him to push you a little further to tell you that you can make it on this morning? What is it that you want the Lord to say? That's an open question. Why don't you give the Lord an answer right now in your own heart? What is it that you want him to say? What is it that you want him to do on this morning? Because whatever you expect, he's going to do it. Whatever you reach out and touch for, he's going to do it on this morning. So get an expectation in your mind. Get something, a desire in your heart, and God will do it. Do you believe it? Hallelujah. I believe it. God will do whatever it is that you want him to do on today. So choose wisely. Choose with strength. Choose with wisdom. Choose with inspiration. Lord, I want this. I want you to free me. I want you to encourage me. 
I want you to deliver me. Welcome into the house of the Lord. That what your request is, God will answer it on this morning. God bless you. Amen. Let's praise God for that welcome. Uh, we honor God and we thank him. I feel welcomed in the spirit of God. And uh, I'm so grateful that we have come to uh, the part of our service where we can hear the word of God. You know, normally uh, when I introduce the man of God, when I introduce uh, the person that will be presenting the word of God and arguing uh, the, the message that the Lord will be given unto us. Normally, I usually say a lot of scriptures and a lot of people uh, would suggest. Uh, that I might just try to be uh, intelligent or intellectual, but it's really in the word of God. Uh, in our lesson today in Sunday school, uh, I presented to them uh, the word of God in Revelations when it says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit has to say unto the church. It does not suggest that there are people in the world that don't have ears. Uh, there are people that are deaf, but Amen. When the scripture says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit says unto the church. Whoever will listen to the word of God, let him hear what the spirit has to say unto the church. For faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How can they hear without the preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? Blessed are them. Blessed are the feet of them that preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm so grateful to God that I have this great opportunity to introduce to you the man of God that shall come on this afternoon. He is my older brother. And some people would say that he is just a singer. I beg to differ to you. He is a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he is coming to deliver the word of God. I'm telling you, you might want to bring your, uh, your tab, your, your notepad out. You might want to get your pen, get some loose sleeve paper because the word that is coming today is going to bless your life from now on. And I'm so grateful to God that I have the opportunity to present to you uh, the man of God that shall come forth in the person of Minister Seth James Tinley. He's going to come and deliver the word of God. But before he comes, our junior missionary, Zoe Michael, will come and, do, and render unto us our sermonic solo. And the next verse you shall hear is that of the man of God in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so glad that you joined Beulah Tabernacle today on this Sunday that we can come together and praise the Lord together and magnify his holy name. But what I want to remind everyone is that no matter the struggles in our life, even the victories that we get, that God still gets the glory out of all of it because all things truly work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So I just want Pray that you pray for me as I pray for you in Jesus' name. Have your way, God.
sing that just one round to God be the glory I don't have all the music that she had but to God be the glory to God be the glory for the things he, he's done. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. That stirred me up. Thank God for our junior missionary, Zoe Michael. Thank God for that rendition, for the things he's done. He's done so many great things. My God. He's done so many great things. We can't tell it all. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't tell all the great things he's done for us. He's a great God. And certainly our great God deserves a great praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. There's no longer a greeting, but it's a command. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord with the fruits of your lips. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and give God glory. Open up your mouth and give God praise. He's worthy of it. He's so deserving of it. He's worthy of every hallelujah. He's worthy of every thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of every Lord, I love you. Yes. He's worthy of every Lord, I bless you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody praise the Lord. Thank God for that rendition, for the great things he's done. Hallelujah. I want to establish pro protocol and thank God for our pastor, our bishop, Bishop Horace C. Michael. Can we give God praise for him? For those who's on Facebook watching, we thank God that you're here with us. There's certainly a word from the Lord in the atmosphere, certainly charged. Thank God for our first lady. Praise the Lord for our first lady, Michael. We give God honor and deference for her and who and what she is to the body of Christ. We thank God for our youth pastor. Minister Hezekiah Tinley, and for all that he is to the body of Christ, 
Let's thank God for him and to our new gen president who came and charged the atmosphere with that song. Praise the Lord for our junior missionary, Zoe Michael. I don't want to belabor the hour. Praise the Lord. I want to get into the word of God. Turn with me to the book of Judges. There is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. There's a word from the Lord for you today, this morning. Turn with me to the book of Judges. I want to go to the 15th chapter. And I want to read the 15th verse all the way through the 17th verse. Judges chapter 15, verses 15 through 17. It is our custom. When we have the word, we declare and decree, I have the word. So I want you to get the word. And once you have it, declare it. I may not be able to see you, but I may not be able to hear you. But God hears you and even the devil hears you. Say, I have the word. I have the word. I have the word. Judges chapter 15, verse 15 through 17, the word of the Lord reads, And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, last verse, when he made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramathlehi. I want to read the 17th verse one more time. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramathlehi. For the next few moments, I want to speak to you from the topic, when am I ever going to let it go? When am I ever going to let it go? Let's look to the throne of grace. Father God, your word is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our pathway, Lord. Into your hands do we commend our spirit, soul, and body. Use us, O God. Speak through us and get the glory out of us this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. When am I ever going to let it go? When am I ever going to let it go? There are necessities in life, things you absolutely cannot go without. If you want to go roller skating, you're going to need a pair of roller blades. If you want to go skating, you're going to need a skateboard. If you're going to want to go shoot hoops, you're going to need a basketball. And if you want to live a life pleasing to the Lord, you're going to need to know his word and apply his word. So there are some necessities in life, things you can't go without, things you have to hold on to. Subsequently, however, there are things in life that you need to let go of. There are things in life that you need to let go. The dilemma is figuring out what in life, what in your life falls into which category. And then the trick becomes, what do you do with what you decide you need to let go of? Where do you place it? To whom do you give it to? And I want to quickly remind you of the words Jesus shared with us when he said, cast your cares upon me for I careth for you. Listen, there are three prerequisites to understanding this word today. First prerequisite is the importance of timing. Second one is the management of seasons. And the third one is the implementation of strategy. So we have the importance of timing, the management of seasons, and the implementation of strategy. Timing is so important. Timing is important because timing is the only thing in life you will never be able to get back. You, you can get money back. You can get, get credit back. You can get friends back. You can get relationships back. You, you can get a job back. You, you can get a status back. You, you can get a position back. You can get a, a title back. You can get reputation back. But the only thing you can't get back in life is your time. Once you lose your time, it's lost forever. As a matter of fact, the Bible, the entire Bible is a book about timing from, from its inception, from the beginning. The book of Genesis, the first words we read, it addresses the topic of timing in the beginning. Timing. Ecclesiastes 3 uh, addresses the topic of timing pretty perfectly. It allows us to know that there is a time 
and a season for everything under the sun. And the reason why this is important is because uh, you will always mismanage your season if you can't get the timing right. You, you will always mismanage your season if you can't get the timing right. And, and, and if you don't operate in the right timing, you'll never be prepared for the right season. You'll never be ready for the right season. And all seasons are is an elongated period of time. So if one week is considered a period of time, sorry, if one day is considered a period of time, then a week is considered a season. If one week is considered a period of time, then four weeks is considered a season. If four weeks is considered a period of time, then 16 weeks will be considered a season. Uh, because one season is multiple times wrapped up or grouped up into one period of time. So what you do with your time determines how you manage your season. And in order to be successful in anything in life, and especially in the things of God, especially in the things of the kingdom, you have to be able to manage your seasons properly. And in order to manage your seasons properly, you must be able to implement strategy. So we have the right, the importance of right timing. We have the manage the proper management of seasons. And now we're going to talk about really quickly the the uh, uh, implementation of strategy and, and, and not just any kind of strategy, but the correct strategy, because what I realize is it's very possible to be strategic and have the wrong strategy. It, it, it's very possible to live in, in, in 21 to 2021 20, and have a, a 2020 mindset. We're talking about, we're talking about when am I ever going to let it go? It, it's very possible to live in 2021 with a 1991 strategy. It, it's very possible to live in the present and have an old way of thinking, an old framework, an old mindset. And certainly our God is a God of strategy. He, he's a strategic God. We, we talked about in Life Changing Academy today that God doesn't waste a thing, but he has a plan for everything. If God allows it, that means there's a, a plan for it. If God allows it, that means there's a reasoning for it. If, if God allows something to happen into your life, that means God has a strategy and a plan for it. Let's examine really quickly the life of, say, a Gideon. Praise the name of God. Gideon, who was was a man small in stature. He, he wasn't a big, strong, muscular, athletic man. He wasn't a bodybuilder. He wasn't an NFL lineman, but he was a small man. And how God had used Gideon to deliver a whole nation of people when at first Gideon was going to use 30,000 men. And naturally, by reason, 30,000 men seems like a good number to go into a war with. 30,000 men seems like it's a good number. You have the, the men, you have the weaponry, you have the army, you have the foot, you have the feet on the ground, you have the numbers. Because two is always better than one, y'all. Ten is always better than five, and 20 is always better than 10, and 200 is always better than 100. But you see in the life of Gideon how God uses strategy. Because what seems right to man, well, matter of fact, let me say it like this, God's wisdom, or rather God's foolishness is wiser than our wisest. What God would consider foolish is wiser than what we consider wise. And his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. And God used 300 men. God had made Gideon on two times, two different times, to knock down the size of his men, of his army, to 300 men. And because Gideon allowed himself to use God's strategy, he was able to defeat a whole army of Philistines. But you got to be clear. Let's be clear. Just as much as God is a strategist, so is the devil. The devil is a strategist as well. He he knows how to use timing. He knows how to use seasons. And he knows how to use strategy. He he knows how to uh, plan your downfall. He knows how to plan your demise. He he knows how to how to set up your slip up. He knows how to set up your mistake. Uh, but Peter gives us an assurance when he said, "Be sober, and be vigilant." Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he walketh about seeking who he may devour. He walks strategically seeking who he may devour. And that's why it's important for you to determine a strategy. 
It's important for you to determine a strategy. Moreover, it's important for you to figure out, praise the name of God, what God's strategy for you is in this season. So you should be asking God questions like, how am I to move? Or, 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 or how am I to operate? How, how am I to function? Who am I to connect to? Who, who am I to disconnect from? Who, who am I to intercede for? Who am I to serve? Who, who am I to pour into? Who am I to receive from? Where am I to go? What, what am I to do? All of these type of questions are important to ask the Lord. Moreover, the answer to these questions are more important to know from the Lord. And this is all important because watch this, wrong strategy in the wrong season at the wrong time, it, it leads to mismanagement. And God won't trust you with something he knows you'll mismanage or mishandle. And this is where we find Samson in the text. He is in a season of mismanagement. He's in a season where he mishandled what he had at his disposal. He, he mismanages his feelings. Good God. He mismanages. Y'all pray, pray for me. He mismanages his seasons. So let's, let's examine the life of Samson really quickly. This is a, a purposed man. This, this is a man who had destiny on his life from, from, from even before his birth. It was purpose behind even his birth. There was a plan even behind his birth. There was a strategy even behind his birth. You must understand that Manoah, his father, Manoah's wife was barren. She could not bear any children. And, and then one day she ran into an encounter with the Lord, much like Jacob, who had ran into an encounter with the Lord. She ran into an encounter with the Lord. And, and, and Samson, even from before he was conceived, Samson was prescribed the way of life. Samson was prescribed a strategy uh, for how he was to live his life. And much like Samson was prescribed the strategy, so were you. Good God. So were you prescribed a strategy for your way of life, how you were supposed to live, how you were supposed to move. God has prescribed a strategy for your life. Even before your birth, I hear the Lord telling Jeremiah, even before you was in your, in your mother's belly, I knew you. I formed you. In the, I hear the words say, be ye holy. I'm talking about strategy, for I am holy. I hear the words say, men ought to always pray. It's a strategy. I hear the words say, go out into the highways and the hedges. That's a strategy. I hear the word say, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. I'm talking about strategy. We're talking about strategy. We're talking about strategy. And even, the, matter of fact, let's use the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It gives a strategy. It gives a strategy. If you want to make an acronym, you know, BT, we're a church of acronyms. If you want to make an acronym out of the Bible, it means basic instructions or strategy before leaving earth. It's a book of strategy. Praise the name of God. And Samson was given strategy for his way of life. Matter of fact, his mother had to abide by the same strategy. You must understand, Samson was a Nazarite. My God, he was a dedicated man. In other words, he was a man set apart. He was a man that was to be holy. And I just told you the words of the Lord that sent for us to be holy, for he is holy. Praise the name of God. And so even before his birth, Samson was introduced to a way of life from the belly because his mother had to abide by the same rules. He couldn't cut his hair. He couldn't He couldn't give, be given over to strong drink because he was a man of strategy. His life was supposed to be a strategic life. But Samson's problem was, watch this, he didn't have a strategy to filter through his feelings. Good God. I'm going to slow down a little bit now. Samson's problem was that he didn't have a strategy to filter through what he felt. And instead of being, or rather, instead of controlling his feelings, he was controlled by what he felt. You must understand, when, when Samson became a grown man, he made a mistake. He went against his parents' suggestions. He went against his parents' words, and he married a Philistine woman. When you get the chance, go ahead and read chapter 14 to understand. I wish I had more time, but I, I don't want to be long. If I'm longer than I want to be, it's the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of God. But he went to his parents and married a Philistine woman. Matter of fact, the text says that he, he, he made his parents go get her for him. That's a problem right there. 
If a man ain't willing to go get what he wants, that's a problem right there. I'm not going to even get into that. My God, I'm going to move on. But his parents, they ate and pleaded with him. And they, 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 can't you find someone in our camp? Can't you find someone in our circle? Can't you find someone who serves your God? She's a Philistine woman. She, she don't know the God of Jacob. She doesn't know the God of Isaac. She don't know the God of Abraham. Can't you go find someone that knows your God, who loves your God? But no, 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 he didn't listen to them. He married the pagan worshiping woman. Watch this. Simply because she looked nice. Simply because she liked the way she looked. And if you want to look at the text a certain way, Samson did sin because he didn't obey his parents. His parents said, don't do it. Don't find someone in your circle. Find someone in our camp. And, 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 and so <laughs> Samson's lack of discipline, wow, discipline falls under the category of strategy. You, you must be strategic in order to have a certain discipline is a strategy for life. Praise the name of God. And so because of his lack of discipline concerning what he felt, his lack of disciplines led him to be distracted. Oh, God. His lack of disciplines led to, to his distraction. And his distraction was the Philistine wife. And that distraction led him to his deception. And his deception was Delilah. And his deception led to his death. So lack of discipline leads to distraction. Distraction leads to deception, and deception leads to death. And the thing, the thing about it, the thing is, and I promise you, believe me or not, I am closer to finishing than I am for what, what I was when I began it. I promise you, I'm almost done. The thing about this is sin fascinates before it assassinates. Sin always fascinates. I believe Bishop said that. Sin always fascinates before it assassinates. And the word, the word, the word of God says that the wages of sin is death. But the way sin leads to death is that it fascinates you first. I remember telling y'all a story. Uh, I preached about, I don't know, I forgot last time I preached. I think it was in uh, November, something like that. But I remember telling y'all a story of how in 2005, in September of 2005, they found a, a, a python snake dead lit from the middle in the Everglades in Florida because it had consumed a baby alligator. The snake had the ability to consume the alligator, but it didn't have the ability to digest it. And in the process of his body trying to digest what he ate, he died. And that's the same way it works with sin. Sin, you, you may have the ability to do something. You may have the capability of accomplishing something. But if it is for you to accomplish, if it's sin, eventually, if you don't get that thing taken, taken care of, the sin will kill you. Samson married what he was fascinated with. He was fascinated with a woman that looked good, the Philistine wife. Take that same concept, apply it to Delilah, someone else who looked good, and it ended up in his death. He died because he was fascinated by the very thing he didn't realize was assassinating him. And, and, and there's always a warning sign. There, there's always a sign before you get to a Delilah. There, there, there's always there's always a precursor. There, there's always there's always there's always a, a forewarning. And you have to be able to read the sign and not become intoxicated with what you see or how you feel. Because if you look at the text, read, I, be, I believe we'll introduce Samson in Judges chapter 13. You read his life, you understand that in some seasons of his life, he's literally in the will of the Lord for his life. The text says that he the Lord will stir him up. The Lord was stir him up. And, and he was in the season. He was in the law. He was in the law. He had the right timing and he was in the right season. He was operating in the right strategy. And so the Lord was stir him up. But then in another season, you see him instead of being in, in, in the will of the father, he's following his own sinful desires. He's following his feelings. And, and when you're controlled uh, by your feelings, your life will always be as unstable as your feelings. Because Feelings are unstable. 
feelings are unstable. You you can wake up in the morning and you wake up on time. You have a good uh, night's rest. You, you're waking up on time and, and you get yourself ready. You're going to work, you're going to school and everything's moving. Bop, 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 A, B, B, A, B, C, D. And you're on time and you're feeling good. You get to work, you get to school and everything's fine. Just dandy. You're getting along with your classmates, you're getting along with your coworkers. You're having a good time in the office. Y'all laughing, y'all smiling, y'all joking. You're having a good time. You understand if you're like me when you was in school, if you understood what was going on in the math class you had a good day so you understood what was going on in the math class your day is going fine and then you get home and your kids are acting up or or, or, or you get home and that ice cream you wanted ain't there no more now your feelings are all out of whack and, and, and it's important not to be controlled by that type of stuff because your feelings are untrustworthy i'm not saying not have feelings I'm not saying not have feelings. The Lord gave us feelings. And what I tell you before, if the Lord allows it, it's for a purpose. The Lord gives us his our feelings for a purpose, for a reason. It's important to be able to acknowledge what you're feeling. But it's equally important not to be controlled by what you're feeling. Praise the name of God. And, and, and so, so, Seth, if I'm not supposed to live by my feelings, what am I to live by? I'm glad you asked me the word. His word is a lamp unto your feet. It, it, it is a light unto you. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall not pass away. Our God is a God that if he says it, he's going to do it. He's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that she, he should repent. But whatever comes out of his mouth. It has to come to pass. So you have to live. You have to learn how to live by his word and not your feelings. That Samson Samson should have never been in the predicament he found himself in in the first place. He's, he's now, now, I want to be uh, uh, integral and honest with the text. The text says uh, that uh, the Lord was going to use him marrying the Philistine. But that doesn't negate. God has an ability to make our, take our mistakes and make it a good thing. God has the ability of taking our wrongdoing and make good come out of it. But that doesn't negate the fact that Samson was in the wrong. Samson was in the wrong, point blank. He was in the wrong, point blank, period. No questioning about it. No, you can't uh, uh, retaliate or what's the word I'm looking for? You can't come back against that. He was in the wrong. But he found himself in this situation because he couldn't let go of his desires, watch this, to love and to be loved. He couldn't, he got himself in this situation because, because he couldn't let go of his desire of being passionate. And so I want to ask you, when are you ever going to let it go? When are you ever going to let it go? Your, your, your passions, your desires, uh, the things that make you feel good, the, the things that make you feel valuable, the, the things that make you feel like uh, you belong, the things that make you feel uh, appreciated, your convictions, your your goals, your purposes, your intentions. Where do you want to go? And I asked you, those things that you decide to let go, you have to have a place to give it. You have to, you, you have, to have a place, someone to give it to. And those things... Man, I just mentioned all of those things. You have to learn how to give it to God. Let's read. Let's read. I got to go. I don't want to be too long. I want to go back to verse 16. Verse 16. And Samson said, with the jawbone, heaps upon heaps, and with the jawbone have I slain a thousand men. He picks the time to admire what just happened. He he takes the he takes he takes the time to rejoice over what took place. He y'all didn't know testimony was in the Bible, but it is because Samson gives testimony uh, to what the Lord has done. But, but look at the next verse. Let's 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 go let's go let's go to verse seventeen. He he you know what he does? He throws the jaw bone away. He he praises God for it. The jawbone. He praises God for it because the jawbone is what he used to kill a thousand men. But he takes that same jawbone and he throws it away. He 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 doesn't take that jawbone and he doesn't put it up and he doesn't showcase it. He 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 doesn't wave it around for the world to see. 
He doesn't take it and post it on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. He he doesn't make a video out of the jawbone and put it on YouTube. Uh, he throws it away be, because Samson understood what he used in one season wasn't going to be what he needed in the next. Good God. What he used in one season wasn't going to be what he needed to use in the next. He understood that what he had in his hand for one season wasn't going to help him in the next. And I, and I want to ask you, uh-oh, you're not about to like me, but I have to say it because the Lord gave it to me to say, you're not about to like me. And, and, and it's not on me. <laughs> it's not on me. I'm just the messenger. I'm just the messenger. Praise the name of God. I want to ask you, when are you ever going to let it go? How you praise God in the 90s. When are you going to let that go and get another praise? <laughs> but when are you going to let it go? When when are you going to let, uh, 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 because you know what the thing about it? You praise God back then for what he was doing then. But God, you, and you, you praise him back then for what you're going through back then. But you're going through something new now in 2021. You're going through something different now in 2021. So when are you going to pick up a 2021 praise that that doesn't look like your 1994 praise? When are you going to pick up a 2021 praise? I, I want to ask you. I want to ask you some more questions. That 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 testimony of the 2000s. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying throw it out. I'm not saying do away with it. I'm not saying forget it. You're going to need to remember what the Lord has done. But could it be that you're no longer expecting God to do something new in your life because you're too busy remembering what he did back then? Could it be your expectations aren't expecting more because you're too busy remembering how he brought you out back then? I'm glad you don't curse no more. Like, thank God for what he did for you. Let's bigger can God give you peace if you're holding on to the anger how, how can God give you peace if you're holding on to strife you have to be able to let it go how, how can God give you joy when you're holding on to the sadness and the hurt of what happened to you you, you have to be able to let it go can God give you more money when you're too busy holding on to the money you already got? You 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 have to be able to let it go. How how can God uh, give you much when you're too busy holding on to the little? You 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 have to be able to let it go. How can God vindicate you when you're too busy trying to get revenge? You you have to be able to let it go. What I like about the text is this. After Samson rejoices over the battle, what he does is he lets go of the jawbone and then read verse 18 when you get the chance. I'm going to tell you anyway, he becomes thirsty. My God. He becomes thirsty. He, he becomes a sore a thirst. That's how KJV put it. He becomes a sore a thirst. He becomes very thirsty. And that, that meant that after the battle, he had he no longer had use of the jawbone. The, the jawbone couldn't feel his thirst. The jawbone couldn't uh, 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 hydrate him. So, so he goes from one seating, season fighting to another season of dehydration. And he had to let go of what he had in order, in, or rather, he had to let go of what he had in the old season in order to be able to receive what was for him in the new season. Because you can't drink water using a jawbone. You, you can't drink water using a jawbone. Translation, you can't receive what God has for you in this season using the strategy of the old season. And you have to let go of what's in your hands in order to be ready to receive what's yours in the next season of your life. So when are you ever going to let it go? When are you ever going to let it go? This, this season, this is a season where God is blessing those, my God, he's blessing those who are empty-handed. Those, those who have worked 
those who have served, those who have sacrificed, those who have gave, those who just have nothing left now. <laughs> nothing but their praise. <laughs> nothing but their worship. They're, they're here, but God is blessing those who are looking for more. Those who are anticipating. Those, those who are expecting. Those, those who are wanting God to do more. Who've seen what God did in the past, but expecting God to do more. Who have the testimonies of the past, but they're expecting God to do more. Who seen the blessings of the Lord, but they're expecting God to bless even more. These, those are the people who God's going to really bless in this season of their life. I'm done and I'm about to pray, but I want to admonish you, praise the name of God. Expect more. And part of your expectation of more is you have to be able to let go of what you had. Because what you're saying to God is, I thank you for what you did, but I'm ready for more. Good God, I'm ready for more. Praise the name of God. I know you're able to do it. I put my expectations on you. I put my hope on you. I know you can do it. I expect you to do it. Lord, bless me with more. I'm preparing myself. I know about timing. I know about season. I know about strategy. And I'm preparing myself. I'm placing myself. I'm maneuvering myself. Lord, bless me with more. Bless me with better. Bless me with wisdom. Bless me with joy. Bless me with peace. Bless me with happiness. Lord, Father God, I honor you and I bless you. I thank you for your word, Father God. I thank you, oh, for your people that are here that's watching on Zoom. I thank you for those that's watching on Facebook. I thank you for those, oh God, that will watch later on. But Lord, bless your people. Bless your people. Help them to set their expectations on you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, help them to do the things they need to do to let go of the things that's hindering them, to let go of the things that's blocking them, oh God, to let go of the things that's not uh, make helping to make progress, oh God. Block those things that are against your will for our lives, oh God. Help us to walk, oh God, oh God, in your word, in your in, in the season that you have us to walk in, oh God. Help us to walk with strategy, not just any strategy, oh God, but your strategy, oh God. Help us to search your face, to seek your face, to search your will. How are we to move? What are we to do? Who are we to do it with? Where are we to go? Father God, give us a mind to seek your way, to seek your your will to seek your strategy because your ways are always better than ours. Hallelujah. There's a way that seems right to man, but the end of it is destruction. The end of it is distraction. The end of it is deception. The end of it is death, oh God. Bless us, oh God. Help us to seek you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help us to let it go. Give us the give us the intestinal fortitude. Give us the strength, oh God. Oh God, to trust you to, enough to let it go. Yes. To trust you to, to let the things go that we like so much. The things that make us feel the way we like to feel. Help us to let it go and give it to you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I praise you and I adore you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, we honor the Lord today and we are so grateful for such a powerful word. Somebody give God a praise for that word. Come on. Somebody open your mouth and give God praise for that word. What a mighty word. What a mighty word from God that we have heard today. The question, the powerful question, the probing question, the prophetic question, when are you ever going to let it go? My God, we honor the Lord today for this rich word and for those precious souls that have received it you have been blessed. I hope you have received this word and that this seed will have reached good ground in your spirit, good ground in your heart and bless you for the rest of your life. We bless the name of God and thank him for his incredible work in the word of God. God did something powerful today. And I hope that you have received it. Did you receive a word from God? Did you receive this word? If you receive this word from God, make some noise about it. Ah, glory. Give God some praise for it. Because even in the midst of this, I feel shackles breaking. I feel yokes being destroyed. And as we prepare to turn this over into our hands of our junior pastor to lead us further, I just want to encourage somebody right now to understand this is the day that the Lord has made. 
and that we shall rejoice. We bless God for you. We bless God for what he's doing in your life. And through this word today, this word came with your name on it. This word came with your name on it. The minister, Minister Seth Tinley delivered it, but the package has your name on it. Are you ready to receive this package that your life may be changed? Will you receive this package that your trajectory may be founded by the things that make up timing, season, and strategy? Yeah, God, the wisdom attached to this incredible panorama, this sequence, supernatural sequence. Ah, God, God bless you, beloved. We are grateful to the Lord for you being here with us today, being a part of this worship experience on this, the day of the Lord. We invite you to come back and be with us on next Sunday at 12 noon on Facebook or in Zoom, and also to participate with us in our Tuesday evening prayer and Bible study facilitated through our Zoom account. We invite you to take advantage of that and even visit our website at beulatabrocks.org, where all of our Sunday services and all of our Tuesday teachings are there from last year even up to this year. You will find a wealth of information that'll bless your life. And so again, you can find that at www.beulatabrocks, B-E-U-L-A-H-T-A-B-R-O-C-K-S. You'll find a wealth of information there that will certainly bless your life. Thank you again for being a part of this worship experience. And until we meet and until we greet, ah, God, take the limits off God. This theme for the year is it shall be done in 21. To God be the glory. Look for it. Expect it. Use your time wisely. Use your seasons wisely. And execute the strategy that God has given you and you will be refreshed. God bless you. Let's look to the Lord as we offer this prayer of benediction, lifting our whole hands unto the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you next time in Jesus' name.